Josiah here at easycaters.com. And uh, today I had a request come in from a user asking if I could port over a indicator from TradingView, the online platform, to Thinkorswim. And so I thought I'd just do a video of how to do that kind of uh, uh, work, how uh, TradingView's Pine script ports over into Thinkorswim. And I thought maybe it would be educational as far as like learning a little bit of um, ThinkScript. So here's the uh, PineScript code from TradingView. And so all this up here can just be deleted. It's uh, just comments and everything. This is just a kind of declaration of what the uh, code is. It's saying essentially that it's an indicator and telling you the name. Um, so we'll delete that. So we've uh, gone in here to edit studies. We've created a new study and we've got this window here with the um, the code. And so what I'm going to do is comment out each line um, that uh, comes from the uh, PineScript code. And so I'll get rid of all these alerts and everything on the screen. Let's see what's going on here. OK, there we go. So. I've just added a, a hashtag or a, a pound symbol in front of each line to comment it out, essentially to deactivate it uh, and to get the red alert text off my screen. And so now I can, and let me actually uh, grab the name of this indicator, Visualizing Displacement TFO is the name of this indicator. And so I'm going to paste that up there and name the study that except for there are a couple of characters that are not allowed in thinkorswim think script names. So I'm going to you know, remove those special characters and I'll just delete this code that I had. And we're back to the um, original. So uh, you'll notice up here at the top, a lot of these say the name of a variable and then input and a type of uh, input that it is. And then it has the um, kind of settings for that input. So all these are going to be input uh, or user inputs that uh, the user can control a setting and so forth. So that's how we'll declare it in ThinkScript. We'll use the input keyword. It's done a little bit backward to what they do in PineScript. Uh, in PineScript, they declare the variable name first and then call it um, an input and tell you what type of input it is. Uh, in ThinkScript, it's a little more basic. We're just going to say, okay, instead of defining a variable with a, a def keyword, we're going to use the input keyword so that ThinkScript or that the platform knows what type of uh, variable this is going to be, that it's something that the user can control. So input uh, require fbg uh, equals yes. So in ThinkScript, we tend to use yes and no instead of true and false. So you can see here we have true. But I'm going to replace that with yes. Um, and so that should take care of that line. And then this next line is input display type, it looks like. So I'm just going to name it that. So I'm kind of documenting as I go. And um, so it's giving the user a choice between open to close or displacement, uh, or let's see, open to close or high to low. Uh, and the default setting is open to close. In ThinkScript, what we have to do is uh, to do these custom strings, we have to um, use a special input here where we uh, give a list of options. So uh, you use curly braces for that. You have to declare a default one. And so I'm going to say open to close as the default one. And actually, I'm just going to uh, run all the text together so I don't have to use um, quotations. And the al alternative is high to low. So it's saying the default option is open to close, but there's also an option for high to low. Um, so that should take care of that one. And then um, standard deviation length is the next setting here. And it's an integer, and it's 100. Um, bars, minimum value of one. This is the title, it gives a little tool tip as far as how to use it. And so we'll call this one uh, standard 
div length equals 100. We'll just set it by default at 100. And let's see what next. We have um, displacement strength is the title of this input. I'm not actually sure what this does, so we'll just uh, follow along as we go, see, see where it takes us. Standard STDX. So I'm not sure why they called it that. Uh, we'll, we'll call it displacement strength to kind of uh, document what it is as we go so the user can see what it, what it controls. Uh, and it says the default value is four, so we'll set it to that. Then uh, let's see, we've got displacement color input. Now, so as far as the, uh, the colors, that will be something that we control uh, when, we, when we actually plot the values, we'll um, control the, the way that the plots look as the very last step that we do. So I'll put all these down here, bar color and displacement color. Uh, we'll handle that later. Uh, candle range open to close. So this is basically just storing the candle range in a variable. So we'll define a variable and we'll call it candle range. And basically we're going to say if the user chooses open to close, then we'll use one range. But if they use high to low, we'll use another range. So uh, candle range equals if display type that the user chooses equals display type dot open to close, then um, we'll use the absolute value of open minus close. Else, we're going to just use the high minus the low. Uh, there's also another way to do this, which is just, I think it's called um, body height. Uh, Thinkorswim has a built-in function that grabs the body height for you, and so you don't have to do the absolute value of the open to close. So uh, that's just an alternate way to do the same thing. And so I'll add this here as a comment. And so then next line, we've got standard deviation equals standard dev. So this means technical analysis dot standard dev uh, candle range and the length. So we're taking this candle range and range and finding the standard deviation of that range over the past 100 periods and uh, storing that in the variable std. Uh, we're also multiplying that value by the strength, I guess. It looks like here the displacement strength setting. So um, that's what we'll do here. So the standard deviation of the candle range over the past standard dev length. And let me see. Yeah, I think that's set up correctly. And then we'll multiply that by the displacement strength. And so that's going to be saved into the variable std. Then we've got def fbg equals if the close is greater, close uh, of the prior bar is greater than the open of the prior bar, then we're going to do this. We're going to store this value. Uh, else we're going to store this value. And this value is a Boolean. It's uh, saying if the high of two bars ago is less than the low of the current bar, so we can just take out that zero, current bar is assumed, um, then, uh, then it's going to store a one or a yes, otherwise it's going to store a zero or a no. Um, and so we'll, um, we'll try to do a similar uh, statement here. If close, and I'll just copy this, save my fingers from some arthritis later in life here. If close one is greater than open one, then high two less than low of the current bar. 
else low to greater than or high of the current bar. So I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do with that, but we'll see. And so this one, uh, the final one is displacement. Um, if require FVG is, is yes, then can to range one greater than standard deviation one and FVG. Otherwise, candle range greater than STD. Okay, so def displacement equals if require FVG is true, is yes, then candle range one greater than STD one. I think those should all work. Yep. And FBG is true. Otherwise, uh, candle range greater than STD. So that should take care of all the logic, I believe. And then we've just got some um, display type of settings here. Um, and I am not sure. Let me let me see how, what the output of this is because I don't actually see an output in this um, particular code. So actually, what the output of this? The only output is that it colors the bars. I wasn't aware of that. So um, this this statement here essentially is the output. It's just coloring the bar whatever this color is. And so I'm kind of interpreting this as I go. Um, so we need to define the color, first of all, the color scheme that we're going to use. Um, and then uh, we're going to uh, plot the color to the price bars or the candles. So um, let's see here. Uh, in this case, since there's only one color, it looks like we're just uh, actually we don't even need to define a variable for the um, for the color, we can just set it to a default color and the user will be able to control that. Um, actually, no, um, in this case, because it's only coloring the price bars and not any plot or anything, we will need to define a global color for those price bars. Uh, bar color is what we'll name it and we'll set it to color.yellow. So, um, I've set up a color setting. This essentially gives it the user a setting that they can change in the global sub panel of the indicator settings, and it's called bar color. Now, down here, we're going to actually assign the price color. And um, if displacement is true, then we're going to color the price bars. And if it's not true, then we're just going to leave it as the uh, at, in its current color. So uh, if displacement, then global color bar color else color dot current. That's how you would do this in Thinkorswim. And I'm not exactly sure what this offset setting is doing here. OK, so what this offset setting does uh, it seems to be that it shifts the entire um, coloration scheme right or left, uh, depending on if this require FVG um, setting is turned to yes. And if it is, then it shifts it into the future by one bar. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. Um, so in Thinkorswim, the way that we would accomplish this, I think, or at least one way of doing this would be to, uh, I think, for clarity and cleanliness, I'm just going to define a new variable um, and we'll call it offset and we'll say if require FVG then negative one otherwise zero. And so this is going to tell thinkorswim how many bars to the left or the right to uh, shift um, shift the coloration. And so then we'll take this and we'll 
um, say if displacement on the current bar, but we're going to shift that forward or backward based on this setting. Uh, I think this should do what we're wanting. So let me uh, take a look at what it does and we'll see if we've uh, successfully ported this indicator over. And let me remove relative volume, which is my indicator from that uh, from the chart here so we can see what coloration uh, this visualizing displacement adds to the uh, chart. Okay, so we've got some signals here. And let's go in and turn off the visualize or the uh, require FVG setting and see what that does to the uh, appearance. Uh, so you can see another signal appeared here when we turn that off. And let's see, let me see if it uh, changes anything else here. I think I saw one change here. So anyway, so it does look like it's changing something. I'm not sure if it's exactly, I'm not sure what that means and everything because I've never used this indicator. But anyway, I, I think that should uh, accomplish what this gentleman was wanting. And um, hopefully that was educational as far as how to use ThinkScript, how to port over some, some of uh, the features and functions in PineScript. Uh, over to the the uh, Thinkorswim platform, and a special case here how you would use the uh, offset setting of a bar color statement in PineScript, how you can accomplish kind of the same thing in a assigned price color statement in Thinkorswim. So anyway, hopefully this has been helpful, and uh, hopefully this will help the gentleman who is uh, wanting to use this indicator in Thinkorswim. And uh, I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks.